Hey guys, Rob from AST here. So, different angle, different location. I know you don't, normally I'm on the other side of the room and I'm standing, but I'm in my kitty chair today to talk to you a little bit about some ABA principles. Um, I feel like the thing I'm talking about more than anything else when I go out into the community and I'm meeting parents for the first time, and even actually meeting some other professionals for the first time is, what's the difference between ABA and DTT? And are they the same thing? Because I think a lot of people, they're so synonymous with one another that we assume that they are. But that's not necessarily the case. ABA is, is the big thing. It's the big daddy. It's the science. It's the study of behavior. And as a BCBA, DTT is just a portion of what I'm trained in. It's just a portion of what we utilize to work with our clients. You know, I like to think of it as it's only one tool in my toolbox when it comes to that ABA principles. Um, and I think sometimes people have a misconception of how DTT needs to be delivered. You know, I feel like most of the time people think this, this table, this is DTT. Child sitting here with me, I sit across from him or next to him, and we're gonna do drills. And it could be flashcards, it could be crayons, it could be whatever the materials are. Um, and that's great, and it works for a lot of kids. But that's not the only way DTT has to be delivered. That's just the really structured side of DTT. The other end of the spectrum is more of a play-based format. Uh, and that's something that was actually newer to me and, and something that I really didn't get exposed to until I came to California. But it's something I really, really enjoy doing. And it's incorporating, you name it, play. You know, stuff like over here, you can see we've got a train set, and I could be delivering DTT segments right here with this train set, playing with a child, because really what DTT is, is a sequence. It's a, it's a sequence that starts off with our big technical term, discriminative stimulus. And what I really like to break that down to is an instruction. It could simply be, give me the train, or give me the blue train, or, or whatever that instruction is. Then we've got the child's response, which... Hopefully, if I ask for the blue train, is in fact the blue train. And then me providing reinforcement for the child. So hopefully social praise, some tickles, whatever it is, whatever is going to be reinforcing for that child. But that sequence can be here at the table. It could be at the train station. It could be at the kitchen table, maybe during a mealtime routine. It, it could be anywhere. But it's that sequence, that discrete, discriminative sequence that's the key to DTT, and it's the key to the structure. So that's really what I, I hope everyone's able to keep in mind, is that DTT is a part of it, but there's always so many other things I want to be doing, and there's so many other things I want to incorporate. So I hope this makes sense as to what DTT is, but I hope this is also just the beginning, you know, the beginning of your understanding of the principles, especially for any parents out there who are starting ABA for the first time because this can be really overwhelming. Um, I had this really nice mom just say to me the other day, I really love ABA, but it can be a little counterintuitive. And that's why I think these conversations are great. So I hope you're able to go out there, talk to some local BCBAs, talk to some people in your community who are knowledgeable about ABA, and keep this dialogue going. And if you want to talk to us some more about this and, and learn more about the science or DTT, more info at autismtherapies.com. Facebook page. Uh, you could even give me a call, 866-278-1520. I look forward to talking to you guys, and I hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Bye.